Hello City Life family, nice to be with you again. I'm going to kick off our new teaching series which we're starting with in this month of September, the subject of prayer. So what is prayer? Well prayer is the best way we can grow our relationship with God. It's the best way we can get to know him, it's the best way we can understand what he wants to say and do so that we can follow him and we can pray about anything and everything with him. It's the way we tell him our thoughts and our needs and our worries so we can get his help. It's the way we bring our friends to him and ask them to help them, maybe get to know him better. As I say, there's nothing that we can't talk to God about and he will listen and respond. Isn't that comforting? Now some of us can wonder, well how should we pray? Should we put on a special voice? A very posh voice? Should we only pray for others and not ourselves because otherwise that might be selfish? Should we kneel on the floor with our hands together? Should we only do it in special places and at special times? Should we only pray if we've been good and not when we've messed up? All these thoughts and questions can make us very confused about prayer. But let's take a look now at what Jesus said about it. We're going to watch a short video. See you in a minute. How to pray. In those days, there were some extra super holy people. At least that's what they thought. And they were called Pharisees. Every day they would stand out there in the middle of the street and pray out loud in big, extra super holy voices. They really weren't praying so much as just showing off. They used a lot of special words that were so clever no one understood what they meant. People walking by would stop and stare, which might sound rude, except that's exactly what the extra super holy people wanted. They wanted everyone to say, Oh, look at them. They're so holy. God must love those people best. Now, you and I both know they were wrong. God doesn't just love holy people. But the people walking by weren't so sure. Perhaps you did have to be really clever or good or important for God to love you. Perhaps you had to know lots of difficult, clever words to speak to God. So one day... Jesus taught people how to pray. He said, when you pray, don't pray like those extra super holy people. They think if they say lots of words, God will hear them. But it's not because you're so clever or good or so important that God will listen to you. God listens to you because he loves you. Did you know that God is always listening to you? Did you know that God can hear the quietest whisper deep inside your heart? even before you've started to say it, because God knows exactly what you need even before you ask him, Jesus told them. You see, God just can't wait to give you all that you need, so you don't need to use long words or special words. You don't have to use a special voice. You just have to talk. So when you pray, pray in your normal voice, just like when you're talking to someone you love very much, like this. Hello, Daddy. We want to know you and be close to you. Please show us how. Make everything in the world right again and in our hearts too. Do what is best just like you do in heaven. And please do it down here too. Please give us everything we need today and forgive us for doing wrong, for hurting you. Forgive us just as we forgive other people when they hurt us. Rescue us. We need you. We don't want to keep running away and hiding from you. Keep us safe from our enemies. You're strong, God. You can do whatever you want. You are in charge. Now and forever and for always. We think you're great. Amen. Yes, we do. You see... 
Jesus was showing people that God would always love them with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. So they didn't need to hide anymore or be afraid or ashamed. They could stop running away from God. They could run to him instead, as a little child runs into her daddy's arms. I hope you like that. So what's basically Jesus saying? He's saying, be yourself, be who God made you to be and just talk away and also listen. He loves chatting with us. And that's really all that prayer is, talking and communicating in lots of different ways with him and him talking and communicating in lots of different ways with us. Every relationship with God is a one-off. No one has the relationship with God that you do or that I do. Every relationship is unique. And so we can find the ways that work best for us to pray and talk to God. Every mum and dad has a different relationship with their children, don't they? And it's the same with God. We're his children and he's our father. And he has a special and different relationship with each one of us. It's never going to be the same for one person or another. And therefore, we can find the ways that we like talking and sharing with Jesus best. And that's what can be quite an exciting adventure, finding all the ways that we can pray and where we can pray and how we can pray and the things that work between Jesus and us, because everybody's going to do it differently. Some people like to walk with God in nature. They like to chat to him as they're looking at the beauty around them. They notice it, he speaks through it, and they feel special just being out there in his creation. Other people like to sit quietly somewhere. This picture shows two boys sitting quietly. I'm not sure how accurate it is. I've never seen anybody sitting like that praying, but maybe some people do. Some people have a quiet place. Others like to write poems or stories or do drawings or crafts as they're praying to God. Recently, I've discovered prayer doodling. Now, I don't know about you, but I am quite a doodler. If anybody puts a piece of paper somewhere and a pen, I'm going to start scribbling away with it. I'm going to make all sorts of swirls and patterns and flowers and paisley things all over it. And by the time I've finished talking to somebody, I'll have done almost a picture. Through reading a book, this book that's on the screen called Praying in Colour, I've learned how I can do my doodling and pray. And prayer doodling is great because you can start drawing your prayers without really knowing what your words are going to be. And it's a really creative thing to do and it's a different way of praying and it's especially helpful if we're not quite sure how to pray. And God begins to speak to us as we take the time and space to doodle because it focuses us and it stops us being distracted by other things so we can open our ears and begin to hear him. So I'm going to show us how to do a prayer doodle. The first thing to do is to take a shape, any shape you like, and don't just think of squares and circles. There's all sorts of shapes. I like the cloud shape myself, so I often use that, and I quite like a star. So take a shape and find a word for God that you want to write in the middle. Maybe you will write God or Father or Jesus or Holy Spirit. Maybe you'll write Shepherd or Healer or Friend. You can write any name you want to for God in the middle of that shape. And as you begin to decorate it, begin to think about him in the way that you've described him in the middle by his name. Think about what that means. Think about the things that it brings into your life and draw some patterns. Maybe write some words as you begin to think about him. I did that on mine. In the middle there, you can see I wrote Jesus. That's probably appearing backwards to you. I'm not sure. And I started to do some hearts and some little blazes of light coming out because he says he's the light of the world and he's obviously love. So I put hearts all around his name and then some little sparks coming out in between those. That's how I did that, just as I thought about him. And then you can write down other things that remind you of Jesus and you can begin to draw those on. So I started to draw on other things about him, the fact that he can be our healer. So I did a little loopy line and wrote the word healer. 
And then I thought, well, he's not just a healer, is he? He's our saviour. He's the one who's died to save us and forgives us all our sins and gives us a new life with him. So I did another little colour and another little sprig and off I went writing the word saviour. And then I thought, well, he provides for us as well, doesn't he? So I did another line and another colour and wrote provider because he makes sure that we have all the things that we need. That's what the Lord's Prayer tells us, isn't it? To ask him for those things and he will provide. So this is my one with the, those springing out bits there. I haven't had time to decorate it very much, but that's the start. And then we can think, OK, so who needs Jesus in that way? Who needs him at the moment to be their healer? And I thought, well, actually, there's a few people at the moment, but my Clive is as well deserving as any. He's not being able to move his legs very well and he's in quite a lot of pain a lot of the time. So I'm going to write Clive there in his own little cloud. And who needs his provision? Well, there are some friends of mine at the moment who just need his provision, some friends that want to move and move house and they're looking for something in the right place and at the right price. And there's lots of people that need things from God at this time. So just write down some of those people that you think of, your friends. I'm just writing friends here because I know who I mean. Looks like I've said friends, but it's actually friends. And then who needs him as a saviour? Well, there's lots of people we know that need Jesus as a saviour, but I've been praying regularly at the moment for my daughter-in-law, Lisa, and for my son, Nick, to really know Jesus as their saviour. And of course, all my grandchildren, I want them to know him as well. So I've written those on there. But there's also neighbours and friends that I'm praying for. And you can just doodle them on and begin to make patterns around them. And God might tell you certain things about them as you do that. And you can write those things down. And you'll end up with this lovely prophetic doodle that tells you the heart of God for these people. So keep your ears open whilst you're drawing and colouring. So I haven't done very much, but I've written a few extra bits on there. And that could really be decorated with lots of swirls and whirls and twiddles, can't it? So that's my start of a prayer doodle. You can also do them for people who really need help at this time. The next picture you've got on the screen is one of the ones from the book that I recommended. And it shows a fam some family who've lost some people who are very dear to them. And it shows a scripture there and a river of water flowing through like it's their tears. And it says Jesus wept. So he understands what it's like when we're sad and he will weep with us sometimes. And it also says that he will dry their tears in time. So that doodle shows that, and I think that's a very special one. So we can do prayer doodles for anybody in any situation. All you've got to do is just take those basic things of drawing a shape, putting a name in, thinking about that person before God, or doing a shape with God's name in, thinking about him, and joining it all together. You can put Bible verses in and other words that come. I did them also for my grandchildren, but I used the computer and some images on the computer rather than just hand drawing. And so here's my one for Emmy, my granddaughter. God told me she's going to be sweet natured. She's going to bring a lot of laughter and joy. So I started to do those things, as you can see. And I've also done them for my boys, my grandsons. I've done one for Nico and one for Knox. And they're just things that God started to speak to me that I started to find images for and then put them on and print them. So they showed me that Knox would be curious and that he would be in a, you know, he'd love nature and he'd be a fisherman and he'd be a fisher of men and a good friend and that he was sensitive and able to discern. And for Nico, they showed that he had a sunny disposition. It was going to win a lot of people's hearts and he's going to be a bit of an adventurer and go other places and he's going to be very compassionate and very generous. So I just wrote those things on. The world is your limit here, literally. You can just really get to it. And the thing that's nice about it is you can keep them and you can look at them and they'll remind you to pray for those people, remind you to say those things and speak those things over their lives that God's shown you. This is another one you can do. You can obviously pray for yourself there and put yourself in the name of a shape and see what God wants to say to you. And you can write the things about yourself that he says to you or the things you're worried about. You can write those in a box and see what he says. Put them in a shape, see what God says about it, see if he gives you scripture, draw it on, write it on, doodle away, colour it all in, make it beautiful. And lastly, you could do a Thanksgiving one. 
like the one shown on your screen now. I loved this. This was from the book as well. It's got all sorts of things on it. It's got peanut butter. Well, there's my agreement there. It was thanking God for um, and drawing on their, somebody's smile that's a friend of theirs. It was putting on sunsets and trees and peaches and avocados and going to the beach. And it had all sorts of things they were really grateful to God for that they enjoy. And um, so that was that one. I thought that was great. We could all do one of those as well. It'd be an easy one to start with, wouldn't it? So I just want to encourage you to pray in all the ways that you want to pray to God, all the creative ways he hears and is part of. Just make sure that when you pray and you talk to him and you draw to him, you're listening and you're hearing those things he's speaking, whispering into your ears about your situations and make sure you keep those written down somewhere because they are precious and you can rely on those words that he's giving you. So I'm going to pray a prayer to finish off that you have a wonderful time doing the praying that you enjoy doing with God, knowing that you have a one-off relationship and prayer is only going to make it grow and grow and grow and you can keep it simple and be yourself. So here's my prayer. Thank you, God, that prayer grows our loving relationship with you. Thank you that we can chat to you about anything and everything and we can hear your reply. Thank you that there are so many ways we pray and that you can answer. Help us pray and explore prayer with you. Thank you that our prayers are powerful and they do make a difference. And we all said, Amen. I'd love you to bring some prayer doodles to our next celebration if you'd like to at the end of the month. So do come along in the fourth week of September on a Sunday to St Albans and I'd love to see some of your prayer doodles then. Lots of love and see you soon. Music